my fellow chatterers and book devourers. We have a tag video today. I am going to be doing a one shot, no edit of the booktube Loki tag. Cheers. So I was tagged very kindly by Anitha from the channel Anitha Garde. Um, this original tag was created by Eric from Break Even Books eight months ago. So thank you so much, Anitha, for tagging me in this. I'm excited. I'm prepared. The books are ready. Let's do this. I also have a massive mug of tea with all my tags inside. So to give it a little bit of randomness, I don't know what questions I'm going to be getting in what order, but let's drink this mug. So the first one is question seven, Asgard. So a book with royalty or godlike figures. So for this one, I have gone for Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker. And this is a book that has been inspired by the Mahabharata. So it's inspired by the Maraha Mahabharata, which is an Indian epic. So it's not a retelling of it. It takes a lot of it, but it's Ashok K. Barker's version of the story into a fantasy world. But there are very much godlike figures as well as demon lords in it. I haven't finished reading this. So I was very excited to read this, but I have only got my bookmark still in. I've only got this far in it um, because I was reading it last May. We then had um, in June on the Shelf Space Discord the um, Olympic Readathon and I wanted to read as many books as possible. This is a very chunky book and I'd already started it but didn't finish. Um, and because I want to enjoy it properly and I'm enjoying reading um, the child's version of the Mahabharata at the same time because I enjoy seeing where inspiration comes from, I'm waiting for a moment where I can give the time to the book that it deserves. But in it is, um, I think she's called Jael, who is the river goddess, but I will just confirm that. Yes, Jael, who is the goddess of water. Um, and so far, that's the only deity that I have met. She, um, she picks up a message or she hears a message through the water, um, which I thought was really cool. So, gods upon a burning throne. What's the tea going to give us next? We have variant two, which is question three. Um, and this is, I'm going to have to read it because I can't read it backwards. Um, show a book series where you have multiple book editions in the series. Um, there are two ways you can do this. You can either show the same book with different covers or you can, for example, show a book that is a book series where your copies are mismatched. So you might have like, book one in hardback and then two and three in paperback or something like that. Um, so if I could be bothered to increase my pile of books, I would show you the Winter Night trilogy where I was fortunate enough to get the final book, Winter of the Witch, in hardback because I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It's the UK edition. And I absolutely love it. But sadly, you cannot get hold of books one and two in hardback. So I have them in paperback. It's still beautiful, but um, I do prefer hardbacks. But the one I'm actually going to show you is, I might have mentioned this series, I might have spoken about um, how I read this series, but I have Words of Radiance from the Stormlight Archive. So here are the UK paperbacks of Words of Radiance, because they break them into two parts, because it's that mahusive. Um, so this works perfectly for me, because I absolutely devour this book this series and it follows me around and I can get it all dog-eared and kind of bent and it's just very easy to kind of walk around with but I love 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 the US hardbacks because they have embossed light it's awful so you can't see it but don't worry you'll be seeing this again at some point they have an embossed shard blade and let's show you the pretty ah beautiful artwork on the end pages. So I have this for my reread, which I'm very much going to be getting to soon and I'm so excited, and the paperbacks for my initial read. So in book, two versions in a book series. 
Okay, next one is question nine, which is an illusion. This is a book you bought because you thought the cover was pretty, but it ended up being bad. Uh, I find this hard to do this one uh, because generally when I buy a book, even if it has a pretty cover, is because I um, am excited about the story and the premise. And um, all the books that have been beautiful that I've picked up have been lovely stories, which is wonderful. So yay that I don't really have one for this book, but I'm going to show you something anyway. Um, so I have two books that I haven't read. I haven't read them at all. Um, and I, this kind of jumped my list. It jumped up my list. I'm very interested in it. It's a thriller. I'm very intrigued by the premise, but it jumped up the list because Waterstones did an edition with oh, these sprayed edges and it's so pretty and you can't quite see it, but there is swirliness going on here as well. And, um, and yeah, and it's just, I just think it looks really cool and with the sprayed edges. So because I wanted to get a copy with the sprayed edges, it jumped up my list and is in my possession, but I have yet to read it. Uh, oh, and this is The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex. And the other book, similar thing, um, is of Women and Salt. I think the cover looks really cool. This, two pounds in a charity shop. I saw it. It was on my list, but it jumped up my list because I'm like, who can refuse that bargain? It's what a lovely copy of this book. Yay. And oh, nice green end papers in there. So I'm hoping that they are not an illusion. I'm hoping they live up to their covers. But at the moment, we don't know. We have no idea. Um, but one book that did not live up to the hype for me, sadly, was Gone Girl. I was so excited to read this book. There was so much hype around Gone Girl. I was like, brilliant. This sounds like an amazing thriller. I'm here. I can't wait. And it, it didn't live it up for me uh, because I guess the plot twist, because I was thinking, what, what is it about this book that has made so many people love it? Because I'm not feeling it right now. I'm not feeling what it is. And I was like, unless it's that. And it was that. And I'm like, well, I already guessed. <laughs> and then it just, it just didn't, didn't do it for me, sadly. So that was my illusion from the hype. Next, we need to pick another tag. What's it gonna be? What am I gonna find in the tea? Oh, here we go. We have question two. Oh, you can't see it. Question two, which is variant one. Show a book you have more than one version of. So, um, as a lover of books, I did used to be more um, selective with what I bought. I was spending money, I want it to be a new book that I haven't read before. But then I realised that, do you know what? I'm also a book collector and it's actually okay if I want to buy a second version of the book. So this is the first book that I have done this with, apart from Brandon Sanderson, but that doesn't count because of other reasons. Um, and this is, I've shown you this before and I think it was one of my booktube newbie tags but you can't tell this is sense and sensibility and i love this book because it's really small you can fit it into a teeny tiny bag just in case you need a little comfort read with you and it's all really really floppy it's very old i don't actually know when this version was published let's find out oh look there's jane hi jane we're, we're on first name terms it's fine it's totally fine this edition was published in 1953 so this is a 1953 book which is so cute um, but it gets lost on the shelf and you can't really see it. See, even though I love it, I have seen other beautiful versions of Sense and Sense. It's, did I say it was Sense and Sensibility? Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Um, I have seen other beautiful versions of it. And I was like, do you know what? I think it's okay that I treat myself to one of these beautiful versions. And so I have recently acquired, this is going to be awful because of the lighting, but I haven't, I haven't yet felt able to take off this plastic protective cover. But this is the season's edition of Sense and Sensibility. Sorry about the glare, but I love it because you have um, you have Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood here in the lovely Devonshire country. There's the little cottage, and I just love that because what I really love about this book is I just love this female sufficient household where they just all live by themselves in the cottage in Devon, and I just think it's really cool and beautiful. <laughs> 
I was like, yeah, I'd love to go hang out with them in their little cottage and read poetry and go painting and go on lovely walks. It just sounds delightful. Um, so this is a really beautiful, beautiful copy. Um, and I'm allowing myself to get another copy of every single Jane Austen book because I read them a lot. They're a big comfort read for me. I love hanging out with the characters. I find them hilarious. I find it so funny. So um, it's my treat to myself that I can have pretty books of my favourites. Okay, let's get this tea drunk because we're now on 10 minutes. Number six is Timekeepers. So this is name a series that has stood the test of time and you get bonus points if it's a trilogy because there are three timekeepers. So I've gone for an obvious classic because I'm currently rereading it. And that is The Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. And it's a fantasy classic and I've just reread The Fellowship of the Ring and just fallen in love with this world again. I'd forgotten how funny the hobbits were. I'd forgotten how I love the different um, races in the world coming together. Um, their different cultures, the whimsical magicness of it all. Um, things like the food, like the, <laughs> the you know, the, the magical elven bread that gives you strength to keep you going. I just love all of that stuff. And I love Samwise Gamgee and the the heartfeltness of his loyalty to Frodo and his great friendship and his even though and his ceaseless optimism that actually you know maybe they are going to be like Bilbo stories and live happily ever after till the end of their days I love the bookishness of it how it's this love of lore and legend and tales and storytelling and how all of the characters love a story they love an adventure story and it's I, it's yes <laughs> it's absolutely stood the test of time it's just as charming and adventurous and magical as it must have been when it was first written and people were allowed to read it and um, I really like these copies um, Two Towers is currently being read so it's on my reading shelf but um, these are the two that I have so got the Fellowship of the Ring here and we have The Return of the King. But I have to mention the other book that has stood the test of time and it's another fantasy series because it's my favourite. And this is one of my favourite authors and it is Terry Pratchett. So I have weird sisters here um, and I think this absolutely stands the test of time. I have recently reread The Witches series. I read it possibly 20 years ago. What am I now? 35, 15, yeah, 20 years ago, which just seems ridiculous that I was a teenager 20 years ago, but hey, life reality check here. Um, and it cracks me up still. It's so funny. It has a, um, a sort of a parody to Macbeth in here, but that that's not the whole story. So y you have that certain like cultural appreciation of it. You have these wonderful three main characters who are witches, <laughs> Ranny Weatherworks, Nanny Og and Magrat Garlic and their relationship between the three they complement each other so well and they are all very different females but equally strong in their own rights and I love them and I think Terry Pratchett deserves more kudos for how well he writes women all of his women characters are very different there is no stock female character in his books they all feel so layered. They all feel so different. And they don't apologise for who they are. They there's, there's no like, oh, I want to be strong and fight with a sword, but I like pretty dresses kind of thing. It's like, I'm me. I'm here. I'm going to do this. And I love it so much. And so, yeah, he absolutely stands the test of time. Respect. Okay. What's next? We have number eight, which is daggers. Loki's Daggers, a book that cut you deep and made you emotional. So for this, I've got two for two different reasons. So the biggest one, the one that I thought of the most when I heard that prompt was Beloved by 
Toni Morrison and I read it for the first time last year um and I can't even begin to kind of describe this book um but it is um it is about um an escaped slave who made her way to freedom with her children oh she sent her children on ahead um and we meet her years later and we don't know what happened um to her family but you get the idea that something happened and in a sort of disjointed way you have different segments of the story you have the present story that's going on at the moment you have the the kind of the, the journey that she had um and then you have like her life as a slave and there is an incident that happened that affected the whole of the family and they're kind of having the re repercussions of it and the incident that happened it happened because of how badly it was to be a slave like how she would want anything other than to return back to that life and for her children to be in that life and that feeling like it's awful and you totally understand how she gets to that point um, I can't say anything more because I don't want to spoil it although right at the beginning it talks about how this was inspired by like an, an incident or like or like a, a, a reading of like a, an actual thing that happened um talk amongst yourselves again I should have prepared this <laughs> more but I didn't um la 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 I'm pretty sure I'm sure it was a, a thing I'm sure it was a I'm sure there was a no I can't see it there I'm sure there was like a, a newspaper article about the thing that happened in here that inspired this book um so that happens right at the beginning so I read the forward first and it says it in the forward so there was a part of me that suspected what it was but I don't want to give it away and spoil it for you it is so Oh, so legs are going dead, I have to stretch them out. Um, it was so powerful. It was just, it's, I still can't completely explain it or describe it. Um, but there is a kind of like a ghostly aspect in here. Um, and yeah, it's, I'm not even going to talk anymore because it, I'm not making any sense. But it was highly emotional. It was so powerful. And it cut me deep. It cut me deep. I think it cuts everyone deep. It, it cuts and it hurts. And yeah. <sighs> so the other one, <laughs> focusing on the more emotional side um, and kind of deep and heavy in a different way is um, to do with a, an identity aspect and a feeling of deserving love. And that was in the book Felix Ever After. I wasn't expecting to um, be as emotionally affected by um how felix feels um in this book i knew i was going to appreciate the story and um i probably would be very fond of felix and i probably would be um, emotional um but i didn't expect to cry and i found myself crying and um, when there's a moment when felix realized oh actually people could love him and that uh, he is worthy of love um so felix ever after is the story of a trans boy who is basically kind of struggling with um, the pulling pulling together each kind of different part of himself. So the fact that he's trans, the fact that he's black, the fact that he's um, from a single parent family and his mum left, um, and the fact that he's poor, um, and the fact that he has dreams and wants to achieve them and wants to be worthy of love and but still hasn't kind of got to the point of feeling that that's going to be possible for him so it's a really big exploration of identity um and I thought that was what was going to affect me but actually it was that that someone could love him and that moment I just I just started crying I just started weeping when he realizes that someone could love him <sighs> so there we go we've got deep and emotional there and um, it's time to move on tea first okay 
I've no idea how many more tags are left. Um, I want to end. I want to end on a on a on a better one. So we're going for this one first. So I cheated with the randomness. Question four is prune. Um, a book that you recently got rid of or are planning to get rid of. Um, so this book has come off my shelf um, because I've been earning more books. There's more books that I want. There's more books that will be coming onto my shelves. And there's only so much room on a shelf. Um, and I like having books facing outwards because my books are also art <laughs> um, as well as a place to store books. Um, so I had to kind of go, right, OK, let's have a look at the books again. Because now I have new books that I love, it means other books that I enjoyed, maybe I don't need them anymore. And sadly, one of those that needed to go was um, Graham Norton's A Keeper. I read this book, I enjoyed this book, I really love the cover. It's a really nice copy. Um, we have a nice little, some trees on the end pages. Do we have a tree on the cover? It's a plain white cover, and then and we have a little tree on the spine there. Um, so it's a very nice copy of the book. It was a very nice story, but thinking how many books I want to read, um, how many books I'm enjoying rereading, <laughs> this is not, it's not going to be one that I'm going to reread. Um, I enjoyed it, but it's time for someone else to have the story and enjoy this beautiful copy. So this will be coming to a charity shop near you <laughs> where you can pick up a book. Um, so yeah, I got I got, I was lucky enough to get hold of this book that I'm excited for. So maybe someone's going to be excited about this one. So bye bye Keeper for leaving the house to go on to a better life somewhere else. Which leads me to my final, final tag. Do, 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 do. And we have question number five, enchantment. So ending on a good one, it is a book that had you under a spell a book you could not put down. There's so many, which is wonderful. How lucky to have so many fun books. So I'm going to talk about a middle grade and I'm going to talk about an adult. So the middle grade I'm going to talk about is Frost Heart, The Escape from Aurora. <sighs> I love this series. It is so heartfelt. You have a found family, you have a magical world in ice, you have these creatures called the Leviathan. Do we get a picture of them? Yes. There we go. That's a Leviathan. We have flying ones, we have swimming ones. Um, they fear the Leviathan, but um, Ash, our main character, hears their songs as, as beauty and he wants to sing with them. So he feels them sort of calling to him um and that is something that is kind of like taboo you don't do it um he is a song weaver and song weavers are kind of like outcasts in a way because of their connection to the leviathan people fear them they they fear that the leviathan power is going to kind of take them over um because they want to sing with them so he's facing a lot of discrimination um but he feels that maybe people are wrong maybe there is something else that the song weavers can do he wants to be given a chance he wants to not be shunned from society um so this is the second book in a tr it's a trilogy this is the second book the first book is over here called frost art <laughs> um they're written by jamie littler who also illustrates them which is wonderful because they are so beautifully done. Let's do the little peek through as well. Um, point that I had before. <laughs> oh yeah, so there's like um, a history of kind of what happened in this world before. Um, there's a mystery of, of his parents and all of these things really start being pulled together in this book and I couldn't stop reading it. And I really wanted to jump into the third one immediately after finishing this one. But there were so many other things I needed to read and I thought I'll, I'll, I'll just I want to appreciate it fully let's give it another month but yes could not put this down I'm charmed it's one of my favorite series the adult book that I have chosen is another epic fantasy and it is ruin ruin 
not the book that ruined me actually. So there's many people who are like, this book made me cry so much and I love it. That wasn't the bit that made me love this. The bit that made me love this was when I literally leapt up into, <laughs> leapt up and punched the air because I was so excited by the payoff we got in this book. Um, this is the third book in the Faithful and the Fallen Quartet. Um, it is written by John Gwynne. It's an adult epic fantasy. It is a very kind of classic, um, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in here where you've been wanting for it to happen. There's things you weren't expecting to happen. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I can't even begin to explain what this book is about. Um, but there's a fantastic found family in here. There is good and evil. There is um, angels and demons. There are lots of kingdoms. There's lots of politicking. There's a lot going on. There's fantastically written characters um, of all ages, of um, all abilities. And I just absolutely love it. I love this world. I love these characters and the, the payoff and the emotional moments I had in this book, um, moments of pain and elation. I just absolutely loved it and I just raced through it raced through it could not stop reading it it was just so compelling thoroughly enchanted by both of these thoroughly 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 enchanted and the cup is empty we drank the tea done so all that remains is me to tag some other people so the people I would like to tag and see their Loki thoughts are um, Jess from the channel Me, My Shelf and I. Now that you've done your test, Jess, looking forward to some maybe tag videos, should you feel so inclined. I would also like to tag Jessie from Jessie the Sleepy Koala. I'm pretty sure she has a lot of book editions that will be interesting to see. I would like to tag Carrie from Carrie Sweet Apple. I feel she's a little bit mischievous. Oh, there's a book tag I didn't talk about because it never went in the tea. It's the first one. Here we go. See, can't edit this. This is all crazy. Um, so I was tagging. <laughs> I was tagging Carrie from the channel, Carrie Sweet Apple. Carrie, I'm tagging you because I believe you are very mischievous like Loki because I adore your sense of humour and would love to see your thoughts on this. In a minute, I'm going to do <laughs> question one, the first book tag, which is mischief. And there's a book that I haven't spoken about here. So I will get to that. Why not do it so randomly? We are tagging people before we finish. I would also like to tag Jolene from the channel Bookworm Adventure Girl because again, I feel she has a lot of um, same copies that I would like to see featured again in books. And finally, I would like to tag uh, I would like to tag Lo from the channel Literary Lo and see what her thoughts and opinions are on some of these. So the one I totally forgot to do, because I didn't even put it in my cup, so fail on that, is um, Mischief. Going to blame the tag, it's clearly mischievous and jumped out. A book with a mischievous character. And I have gone for Anne of Avonlea by Ellen Montgomery, which is best known Anne of Green Gables is a children's classic. This is the second book in the Eight Anne series. And in this book, we are introduced to two orphans called Davy and Dora. And Davy is highly mischievous. They're six. <laughs> and uh, Anne helps Marilla to look after these children for a little bit and try and manage Davy's very many tricks <laughs> and pranks and things that he goes through. Um, but he ha has a heart of gold and he just, he just, Needs a lot of love and kindness, probably a little bit more of a firm hand than what he gets from Anne. But he reminds me so much of many six year old boys and I find him, I find him quite funny and adorable. So he is my mischievous. So that is the end of the tag. We are done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like so that I know. Um, if, um, you would like to do this tag yourself please please do consider yourself tagged i would love to see your videos and tell me tell me that you're going to do the tag that would be absolutely great um and if you enjoyed this and want to see more please do think about subscribing that would be really nice 
um, and chat to me in the comments. That would be wonderful. But if you're just happy to watch and carry on, thanks for stopping by. Happy reading, everyone.